Welcome ladies to Coffee with Kelly week 50. We have hit a milestone. Woohoo! 50. <laughs> week 50. I have my Coffee with Kelly cup. I even had whipped cream. Little foo-foo going that I just spilled all of my Bible and gleaked it out. Look at that. So anyways, week 50 is very exciting. It's a milestone. It's hard to think we've been doing this for 50 years. I started it 50 years, 50 weeks. Started it right after uh, COVID uh, started. So it's been almost a year, two more weeks, and it'll be 52. And I thought we need to celebrate, and I don't know how to celebrate all together. So I decided for the first two people that email me, my email is kbell at calvarymarietta.com. So for the first two people that email me and say, God is faithful, you are going to get a prize. I will send you a prize if I don't know you or I don't see you all the time. So the first two people that email me and say, God is faithful, you get a prize. And so uh, that will be fun. We just need to celebrate. I kept praying about and thinking about what should I talk about at week 50? Maybe I should do some fun facts about 50. Uh, maybe some Bible trivia, like it's the number of chapters in Genesis. Uh, what happens to people at age 50? I read that, oh, at age 50, people like to sm uh, smile a lot. thought that was weird. They like to explore new things. They get senior discounts, which I don't think is true. I never got a senior discount at 50. Um, they say at 50, no one cares what you really look like anymore. That was kind of getting depressing going down their road. But I, I, I changed my mind to doing that. And so I started to pray and thought, God, what really, what really is important for us to focus on? On this week 50 and he showed me I felt that we should look and talk about God's faithfulness how faithful he has been to us this last year so let's open up with a word of prayer as we celebrate 50 weeks together father we do come before you uh, this afternoon this morning Lord I thank you for your faithfulness I thank you that you are the same yesterday today and forever we can always count on you we can always believe you uh, we can count on your words. Your promises are yes and amen. And we are so grateful for that. So I pray, Lord, that as we just take a few minutes to focus on your faithfulness, that that would be an encouragement to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So anyways, his faithfulness seems to be an appropriate topic for us. Because as we started Coffees with Kelly after COVID, the purpose was to encourage women as we began to shelter in place. We couldn't meet anymore for Bible study. Ladies were, oh, well, not just ladies, all of us were having a difficult time with so many different things. And it was just a, a fun way to hopefully encourage one another in the Lord. And I look back and I see how faithful God has been over this difficult year. The word faithful means to remain loyal and steadfast true to the facts, true and proven. And when I think about that, God is the very meaning of faithfulness. He is the epitome of the example of faithfulness. It's one of his unchanging attributes. God will always do what he says and according to his nature. God's faithfulness honestly is one of the foundations of our hope. I love Psalm 35, five. It says, your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Another one is in Psalm 89, eight. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, your faithfulness surrounds you. And one more, Psalm 119, verse 90. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. He will be faithful, not just to the Israelites, not just to you and me, but to our children and our children's children and our children's children. His faithfulness assures us of our eternal security because he's not going to change his mind about salvation. His faithfulness allows us to not fear, uh, like during this last year when the world seems out of control, because we know he is sovereign <coughs> over all of the universe. And I can look back at this year of COVID, and I know you can too, and God has taken care of me. He has been there for me through every fear, through every frustration, through every distraction, every insecurity. He has walked me through every disappointment, every accusation and criticism, and every bout of depression that I have faced. 
His word hasn't changed. His care for me hasn't changed. His provision for me hasn't changed. He means what he says and he says what he means. And that, ladies, is such a reason to rejoice. I, I just, uh, I, I'm so grateful for his faithfulness. It hasn't been easy this year. As you and I all know, it has not been easy, but he didn't promise it would be. <clears throat> but he promised that he would be with me and with you, that he wouldn't leave us alone to handle all this through COVID, through the election, <coughs> through the issues of racism and trying to figure this out. All the issues that have come up globally and locally and personally, he has been there. And I have had, just like you guys have, to make the choice daily to trust him. Daily, it's a choice. And I love what Charles Spurgeon says. The glory of God's faithfulness is that no sin of ours has ever made him unfaithful. Let me repeat that. The glory of God's faithfulness is that no sin of ours has ever made him unfaithful. When we blow it, he doesn't say, forget you then. He doesn't become unfaithful. He doesn't get mad at me or you and change his mind, throw me back, you know, throw me back overboard like Jonah. He doesn't do that. <clears throat> I have failed many times in my attitude and heart these past 50 weeks, gotten angry, gotten bitter, and I, I don't know, name any other emotion you can think of. I, as well as you, have felt it. But I am reminded by Hudson Taylor, all God's giants have been weak men and women who have gotten a hold of God's faithfulness. And that is the amen truth. All men and women are weak, but we have gotten a hold of God's faithfulness. I love that because I am a weak woman. I am. I am weak emotionally, mentally, often spiritually, uh, as aging, getting more and more physically weak. But I love in 2 Timothy 2.13 where Paul says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. His word doesn't depend on me and my faithfulness. And I'm so grateful for that. He is faithful no matter. Uh, I can be my worst enemy and it doesn't change his faithfulness. So during these difficult times, we can recall God's faithfulness when confronted with any new threat. You know, part of our uh, spiritual maturity is having this strong sense of one's own history and remembering his faithfulness. As I look back and took time this week to look back over the 50 weeks, I just thought about all the incredible ways he's been faithful. <clears throat> his promises have been made true. And this morning in my own devotions, I use a, a New Living Translation, a daily Bible. And in Matthew 28, it was talking about when... Uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to visit the tomb after Christ had risen from the dead and there was an angel there and the angel said don't be afraid and told them to go tell the disciples. It talks about the guards uh, being told to lie and say that the disciples had came and stolen the body and then uh, they, the disciples were supposed to go meet Jesus in Galilee but then in verse 16 it says, Then the eleven disciples left for, left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. And, and then it goes on, and I guess that just really struck me because I was getting ready to talk about its faithfulness. They had been with Jesus. Jesus had told them what was going to happen, and they probably missed half of it. But they, he had been faithful to them. And him, honestly, by dying and raising from the dead was a sign even of more of his faithfulness because he promised that was going to happen and he promised he was going to return. And there he was in the flesh. And it says some of them still doubted. You and I are so prone to doubting. We doubt God's faithfulness. Well, he said this. Did he mean it? Well, he did that last time. Will he do it again? And we have to come to a place in our spiritual life that we believe it with everything in, in us that he is faithful. And, and again, not that all your life is going to go perfect and all your plans are perfect, but he is faithful to his word and to his promises. Um, he is steadfast. How has God, ask yourself this, been faithful to you these past 50 weeks? What has he gotten you through? How has he met you when you called on him? Has he ever left you? 
He hasn't. You are here. Trusting in his faithfulness honestly gives us a peace of mind. We can rest in our spirits and rest our minds because we believe his faithfulness. I love Isaiah 25, 1. Oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Your counsel, your counsels of old are faithfulness and true. So instead of fretting and being anxious, we can, you know, trust in his faithfulness and that will give us a peace of mind and heart. Honestly, even talking about his faithfulness gets me excited and encourages me. And I felt like God's exhorting me through his word and just even through this time talking to you. Because when I think about it, it, it just encourages my spirit. I just wanted to read down further on that verse in Isaiah 25 because I love it and because it's a continued testimony of his faithfulness. It goes on in Isaiah 25 says, For you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. He has been all those things. He will meet you in all those things places when you're in distress or you need refuge or you need shade he is there no matter what no matter what's going on no matter the season no matter anything he is there he is faithful so let's celebrate together God's faithfulness over the past 50 weeks maybe make a list of how God has been faithful to you to encourage yourself you and your family maybe do it as a family kind of you know activity for you to encourage and speak truth into each other's lives record the history of his faithfulness and let it encourage you for your future God we thank you for always doing what you say you'll do now always and forever amen let's pray Father God, we do thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you that we can trust you again no matter what. And as we look back over this year, what a difficult year. What a trying year. So many decisions, so much hate, so much turmoil, so much distress, so much um, unknown. But God, you are our known. You are our constant. You are our source of peace and comfort and joy and peace. And I pray that we would focus on that um, and remember that you are there with us and that that would keep us steadfast and strong and moving forward. We love you so much. And I thank you for the last 50 weeks. I thank you for these ladies who watch so faithfully. And I thank you for the first two who are going to email me and get a prize. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.